What's up, Chess Familia? Welcome back to the grind. Okay, playing as white. We're going to play the London system. We're going to see if we can play it better today. We've had a rough couple of days on, uh, on the channel. So we're going to see if we can do better. Uh, fully expecting to see Bishop G7. Wouldn't it be kind of funny just to like push this or something? He push, he'll probably push a pawn. I wonder if Bishop E5 is like a response to Bishop G7. Hmm. I'm going to try that in the analysis and see what the engine says about it. I know he could push a... Oh, wow. That's quite the move. Haven't seen that one yet. I'm almost tempted to just start trading off here. Isn't it good? Well, I basically have three. Well, I would essentially have like one more attacker than he has defender, if that makes sense. Hmm. Boom. Boom. Let's not get carried away with too many shenanigans. It's really tempting, but I'm going to try to play soundly and principledly. Well, his light square bishop is going to have a really hard time. Okay. Um, I'm actually fine to go like 95 here at this point. Even if we trade off, I can just push the pawn or just put the bishop in the place here. Uh, it's so tempting, but I just want to develop the pieces at the same time. I don't know, it just seems like such a good time to do this if there's ever been a time. I don't know what's better, like planting a knight here on e5 or using the pawn to kick this knight. I'm just going to play h3 in case he does some funny business on h5 here with his knight. I know that move might look a little weird, considering I still need to push knight d2 and pawn c3. But I'm going to go for it. See, like, his queen and his bishop are, like, very locked in here. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I was expecting. So, I think what I'm going to do is... I wonder what's better here. I wonder if it's better to fall back or just start offering the trade here. The knight's in a really bad spot. So even if I scope this off with like the light square bishop, it would be really good. I think I'm going to put the dark square bishop on e5. So I can at least have the option of leaving the knight there after the trade. And then if he wants to push f6, I'd be happy to just fall back. I don't know. Maybe I'm making a mistake here, but uh, we'll see, I guess. If he wants to push f6 and just not trade, I'm actually happy to fall back. Yeah, so this is good. 
I'm really tempted to just take with the pawn here. Tempted to take with the pawn. I'm going to take with the knight. If he wants to trade off, I'll just... I'll be up. I'll be up a pawn. So I think this is okay. Yeah, I think this is good for me. Like, so... He's basically blocked in his light square bishop from going anywhere. So I think I have to... Sort of just take advantage of this at this point. I can either push c3 here. Push c3. I kind of want to just attack this knight. Um, let's see, his knight doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, except maybe... I guess he could go g7. Maybe I should go queen f3 here at this point. Sack a bishop. <laughs> I think this is the big idea with the London system is that eventually you want to like sack a bishop over here. Maybe I just start hurling my pawns at him. I'm going to play knight f3. It seems okay. I think eventually the goal is that I can work my knight onto g5 at some point. And then maybe once his queen moves, I can get sort of my queen onto the h file and then maybe look for the check over here. <clears throat> I'm really tempted to just go for the sack. H4 is a bad move. His queen still has that square protected. And G4 is like a really tempting move. But he still has the g7 square to fall back to. That's not really a big deal. I can just fall back here. Okay. I want to have the option of like putting my queen onto f3 at some point. Hmm. Maybe d4 is like a decent square for the knight. Attacks this pawn at least. Man, getting the knight onto, what is that, f6 would be, like, really sick. Hmm, wonder how I can get there. I wonder if I just try to reroute the knight here. Uh, 
That would be a really sick square. That would be very, very sick. I don't want to allow his queen to get onto h4, though. It's really tempting, but... Yeah, I don't know. I like that this is stopping queen h4. I'm just going to connect the rooks here. I think I'll connect the rooks and then just point one at his queen. And the opponent's using, like, no time whatsoever. This would be a pretty nice square for the knight as well. It's okay. I'll just throw a rook sort of on the same file as his queen. Uh, looks like he's scoping <clears throat> this pawn here. So I wonder how I could abuse that. Hmm. I wonder if there's any way that I can defend that. Looks like I can't really defend that, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, well, just kidding. <laughs> Knight f3 is already defending that. What am I saying? <laughs> Duh. And this g6 is so tempting with the bishop for some reason. Yeah, I have to keep the defender here. Hmm. I could try to break the tip of his pawn chain here. I like having the bishop on this square, though. I almost blundered my queen there. Uh, my knight is uh, going to have a hard time here. Okay, maybe I don't want to quite go there. Hmm. Yeah, this is not really a great square, huh? I want to start moving the knight around, is the thing. <clears throat> this might look a little bit silly, but I want something to protect this pawn because I feel like it's pretty valuable. Because uh, it seems like it's very valuable at this point to be able to get one of my pieces onto f6 here, or even just exchange a piece. So like, even if I went like knight h2, knight g4, knight f6, even if he takes with his knight, I can just push a pawn and then look for the mate on that square on g7. I don't know, just an idea. Yeah, I'm going to try to get the knight over there on f6. I think it might be wasting a couple moves. But, I don't know. I just want to take advantage of this diagonal while I have it. His knight's like in a really bad spot, so I want to try to sort of pressure this area. We'll see if it actually goes to plan. I'm basically just trying to punish him for sort of locking his bishop in back here. 
I don't know how much I really care about this pawn at this point. Do I really care about this pawn? Not really. I'd rather go for the check on that. Only problem here is that if I... Well, I guess if he... Ta well, I guess he's trying to probably... Move the bishop. Yeah, I'm just going to take this, actually. Okay, it's fine. I'm just going to keep trucking along with my little plan here. If he takes with the knight, I'll actually be pretty happy. Um, this seems really good. He's going to have to move his queen. Yeah, I'm basically threatening sort of mate with the queen on this square here. Only tricky part about this now is that I basically have to protect this pawn at all cost. So. Yeah. So maybe it's actually queen sacking time. Or uh, bishop sacking time, not queen sacking. Yeah, what's great about this is that he can't attack this pawn with anything. Um, he just has nothing to attack it with. His king can't attack it. Uh, his uh, queen can't attack it, otherwise she just dies. So I'm just going to look for the mate here. If he pushes his pawn, I just take. I think this is kind of like... I guess his only thing he can do is... Push the pawn up. So maybe I should have uh, sacked the bishop here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he just has to play h5 here. I think h5 is like the only valid move he has. I think what I should have done instead was played f4. Oh. Yeah, I think he kind of blundered that. So this should just be mate. Yeah. He doesn't have any way to protect this. So yeah. I know he has a sort of mate in one on the next move after he pushes d4, but I just got to it faster, fortunately. Yeah, he had to play h5 there. I think that was his only valid move. Yeah, if I could go back and redo this, I would have played queen f4 instead. Yeah, I would have played queen f4. I think that would have been better. Yeah, so there was the mate there. Yeah, he had, he had no way to get, get out of that. GG, star gamer X. Appreciate you. Let me just go look at this position real quick. Uh, I want to see what the engine says about uh, what he needed to play here.
So Queenie seven. I see. Yeah, it's it's funny. The the engine is basically telling him to sack his queen here. <laughs> uh, as crazy as that is, I can't believe the engine's actually recommending that. That's that's pretty wild. Queen e seven. So why couldn't he play h5 here? Queen g5? Oh, sure. Sure, sure. So yeah, even then he, he really can't do anything. Well, couldn't he play like uh, his king over here? Or no, because that's... Well, couldn't he play h7? Oh, sure, this pawn is pinned. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay, well, let's look at this game from the top. Okay, d4, good move. You guys will be really proud of me. I didn't throw away my advantages this game. Makes me feel better about the last two days worth of games. There goes the engine recommending c4. I think with the London system, I've decided I'm just not going to play c4 under all circumstances, and I'm just always going to play c3. I think c4 is like such a situational move, and it's kind of a move that's above my pay grade at this point. And I feel like c3 is just safer because every time I've lost to the London system, it's always been with some piece on b4 or b2. And I feel like the c3 is just so much safer because it prevents any piece from harassing b4. Like yesterday when I got that really nasty pin with the bishop on d4 and my queen was protecting d2, it was, um, yeah, it's just, it just seems like it's a common theme. Oh yeah, I was really curious about this position. At, or, no, 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 where was I? Where was I? Here I was thinking about just trading these pieces off. I guess the advantage is not that good. It's not as good as it looks. Hmm. Oh yeah, so what if I played bishop e5 here? Because I knew he was going to play G bishop e7. This actually gives him a slight advantage. Oh, so knight of six. Well, he actually has the advantage here. Hmm. Even with this super messy structure. Yeah, I guess he still could put his bishop back there. And then the doubled f pawns are not that big of a deal. Okay, yeah, so the sort of really early attack here was not the play. It could be stopped too easy, I guess. Good to know. H3 might have been a, wa a waste of a move. I thought he was potentially going to try to uh, play uh, knight h5 next. This knight just didn't really seem that great here since it removed a defender from e5. So I thought he was going to look for the early h5. So... Yeah, which I think he did end up doing, right? Yeah, he did end up playing h5. Okay, and then falling back here, yeah. So I was debating between falling back into the hidey hole or just trading off here. Doesn't hurt me, but it doesn't help me either. Oh, interesting. So it's like a dead even position here. Hmm. No way. Well, surprising. I thought this was probably one of his worst moves, if I could be sort of hypercritical. The reason being is he just locked his light square bishop in behind this uh, pawn pyramid. And he was, a he was never able to do anything really effective with his light square bishop. Like his, uh, his bishop just kind of danced around these few couple squares and it was just always behind this pawn wall. So...
And yeah, same here. I mean, he's sort of opened up a diagonal for his light square bishop here, but then he clo closed it in with the pawn. <laughs> so I'm not trying to make fun of him or give him a hard time. I'm just trying to look at the position sort of critically and just think about sort of the principles of developing pieces and letting the minor pieces breathe and not locking them in. Kicking the knight. Yeah, see, I figured if he... I figured if he needed to run his knight back somewhere, it was going to be back here to g7, which... I don't know. I know it's a really bad spot for the knight, but I just, my goal was to get the pawn over here to f6. And I, I wanted to try to follow through with that as much as possible. Yeah, this was a bit of a risk move. Normally I try not to keep the queen on the same file as the rook, but I just recognize here that there was no way, like these pawns were not going anywhere. So I thought this was okay. Uh, pawn a5 just seemed really passive. Wasn't sure what to do about this one. What should I do in this position? G4. Well, kick the knight. Okay. G5. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> one way to look at it <laughs> i guess b3 i was picturing picturing him taking this and then what would have been better taking with the pawn yeah i was debating between moving the queen back or taking with the pawn but it looks like recapturing with the pawn would have been better i wanted to leave the queen on this um uh, on this rank so i could work it back here It's not a mistake, but it's not the best move. You made a great outpost for your knight. Yeah, this move was really satisfying. It was a bit risk moving the knight around so much. I mean, it basically took, what, one, two, three moves to get the knight out of here. But it just seemed like such a powerful square for the knight. And even better yet for the pawn. Yeah, and then it was GG after that. Okay, cool. We got Star Gamer X. Appreciate the game. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. And uh, I feel a lot better today actually finding some decent moves and not blundering anything super hard. Uh, yesterday kind of took a toll on my mental chess willpower, strength, stamina thing. <laughs> Anyways, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next game.